<laughs> okay, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, I was expecting a thunderstorm because usually when I give talks, there is a big thunderstorm outside. Anyway, okay, so um, I don't have slides, and I have this one theorem. So this is the following statement. This is joint work. with David Aspro, and it shows that MM double plus implies the axiom star. So I don't want to write down what MM double plus says. I will write down a consequence. MM double plus says that whenever you have a stationary set preserving forcing, which means that it preserves the stationarity of subsets of omega 1, and you, I give you uh, L of one many dense sets, and I give you L of one many names for stationary sets in the extension, and there is a filter in the ground model which meets all the dense sets, and it also interprets the stationary, the names of the station for the stationary sets actually as stationary sets. And the axiom star uh, is a conjunction of two statements. Um, Okay, this I guess was introduced by Foreman, Magidor, Shila. This was introduced by Hugh Woodin, and it says two things. It says that AD holds an L of R, and it says that there is a filter G, which is P max generic over L of R, such that uh, the power set of omega 1 of B is contained in the, in the extension of L of R. Okay, so when we want to prove this result, we don't have to worry about that because this was already done by other people. So John Steele showed that, for instance, showed for instance that PFA implies the axiom of determinacy in AD, um, the axiom of determinacy in L of R. Okay, so that part is taken care of. Now, what about the other part? So throughout the talk, I will fix a subset of omega-1 which computes omega-1 correctly. So we fix once and for all an A subset of omega-1 such that the omega-1 of L of A is the true omega-1. And then people have known for a while that there is a good candidate for, for the G you want to produce, namely the following. Maybe I should write it down here. So fixing this, we say that G sub A, I mean, you realize I'm not defining P max or anything, so I'm actually trying to give you a sketch of the proof. So this is why I don't want to talk too much about background and you know these kinds of things. And, okay, so what is it? It's a set of uh, P max conditions um, so that there is, so this is a countable thing, there is a generic iteration Ni, sigma ij, these are the models from the iterations, these are the maps, i less than or equal to j less than or equal to omega 1. And by the way, I should say it here, whenever I write omega 1 without any superscript in my talk, it's the omega 1 of the ground model. Okay. Um, okay, so there is a generic iteration uh, such that of, of, of the first model, which is p, such that if if you write the last model, <coughs> n sub omega 1 as, well, there is a universe, epsilon i a star, then i <coughs> is equal to the true non-stationary ideal of v, intersect the last model, and a star is this a. Okay. <coughs> Okay, what else is known already? So this candidate has been around for a while. So what is known is that under the right hypothesis, G sub A is a filter. Uh, okay, let me write it down here. G sub A is a filter. I don't think you can prove that in ZFZ, but for instance, if uh, the non-stationary deal is saturated and you have that p omega 1 sharp exists, then that's a filter, and the argument can be read in Hughes' book. Uh, um, 
Okay, so that is a filter, and the very same argument, you know, uh, there is this argument why if n is saturated and p omega one sharp exists, then delta one two is L of two. The very this argument also gives uh, takes care of this kind of thing. So if we are able to show that this filter is generic over L of R, we we already know this thing, and and that's it. So that's all that's left to do. Okay, so we need to see. that G is this, this G. G sub A is P max generic over L of R, and then we are done. Okay, so the, um, so how are we gonna use um, the, the force of um, Martin's maximum? We are actually not going to use the full force of Martin's maximum plus plus. So actually, let me, um, I mean, there are many things you could say the proof really shows. I only want to write one thing, uh, a theorem. So for instance, one way to phrase it is that in the, in the presence of a proper class of wooden cardinals, uh, the following are equivalent, star, and secondly, uh, a forcing axiom, which I think is denoted as follows in Hughes' book, it's D B M M plus plus for all sets of reals in L of R. Uh, we will use later that uh, under under the right hypothesis, all the sets of reals in L of R are universally bare and even more holds true. So we can formulate this axiom as saying the following. It says that if you look at eight at the structure H omega two epsilon together with a non-stationary ideal together with a predicate for D, so this structure with this as a predicate, uh, then this is, you cannot change the theory of this thing by, the, sorry, the sigma one theory of this thing by stationary set preserving forcings. Okay, so D has a new version in the extension because it's universally bare. I'm writing D star for that. Okay, so this is, sorry, for all P posets P, stationary set preserving. Okay, this, this is the definition of this forcing axiom. This is basically what we are gonna use. We use some other consequences of MM or MM plus plus. So for instance, I want to use that uh, uh, the non-stationary ideal is uh, saturated, but you don't really need that. Um, okay, so what we are gonna do, so this is a consequence of MM double plus, and I'm not, I'm not going to prove that they are equivalent. Okay, so, so this implies this. Now I, I can make use of, of that. So what I have to do is, you know, uh, how do I prove this? So, so you give me a, a dense set in L of R. I can code that as a set of reals. I will confuse these two things. Uh, so the statement, the statement that there is an element of that dense set, which P, which has these properties, this can be expressed in a uh, sigma one way over this structure where this is the dense set, right? because this is a sigma one statement, right? There is a generic iteration of length omega one, blah, 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 and you need to make reference to the non-stationary ideal, so you have to have that this doesn't cost you a quantifier to, to express this kind of thing. And, uh, okay, so the statement that you have such a thing, which is all, also in your, in the dense set which you gave me, this is a statement which is sigma one over the structure, so therefore if I can force it, then it's true, and that's it. Okay? Hmm? Sorry? I'm sorry? Yeah, but this is bold phase. Okay, the A. Sure, the, the statement also mentions A, but this is bold phase, yes. Okay?
Okay. Okay, so we have to prove the following. So there is a key lemma. So let D. Uh, so this is a. And of course, if you see the proof, you really realize it doesn't have much to do with L of R. You can formulate a more general statement. OK, but anyway, let's focus on L of R. So let D be uh, dense in L of R, dense in Pmax. And uh, what we want to do is we want to show there is a stationary set preserving forcing P. Um, uh, such that in the generic extension, there is some element P of the new version of D together with an itera a generic iteration like here, Ni sigma Ij such that if you write the last model n omega 1 as n omega 1 comma epsilon comma i comma a star, then i is the non-stationary ideal of the forcing extension, and a star is a. Okay, so we want to we want to force that. Um, the okay, the, the what is the starting point? The starting point is something which we had also known for a while. Uh, namely, that it, the, the thing which you want to add by forcing is consistent in a very strong way. And other than defining what I mean by this statement, what do I mean by consistent in a strong way? Let me just give you the argument. Okay. So the starting point is, is the following simple observation. Maybe I should do it here. Uh, so let's work in, in a generic extension where you collapse omega 2. Omega 2 is also the size of h omega 2 under our hypothesis. Okay, so we, what you do when you do that, you, you basically you turn h omega 2 into a Pmax condition, right? The structure h omega 2 epsilon, the non-stationary ideal together with a, this now became a Pmax condition. Okay, so I said we use that every set in L of R is universally bare. We also have the fact that under our hypothesis, um, Every projective statement about every set in L of R is, is absolute. So the set, the new version of D will still be a subset of the new version of Pmax, and it will still be dense. Okay? So there is a condition in here, there is a condition below that thing in Pmax. So what does that mean? That means that you can iterate this guy to something, let's call it M omega 1 of, so you, there is a stronger condition n0, so you can iterate that inside n0 to produce m sub omega 1 of n0, uh, okay? So that this whole picture is an n, is an n0, and that n0 is an element of d or d star, okay? And now what you can do, okay, now let's look at this guy. Let me write rho for the omega 1 of, of this model, which of course is simply omega 3. Okay, what we can do is you can now iterate n0 um, and, uh, and map the omega 1 of n0 to, to omega 1 to, to rho. You can even do it in a way that um, the resulting ideal will be the non-stationary ideal of, of, of that forcing extension but it happens that this is not relevant. It's a bit amazing, but it's true, but never mind. Okay, so we, what I want to do is I want to iterate this row many steps working in here. Okay, so this is my map sigma. So I have this iteration map, I don't know, pi bar. I can look at uh, sigma of pi bar. That's the map down here. It will send this guy to something. I call it m row. This will just be an end extension of the iteration from here to here, so it factors through here, right? Now, um, okay, uh, what I can also do is I can do the following. Um, 
I mean, this is this is an initial segment of, of V, basically, right? So I have V here. Uh, this this is a generic iteration of this structure, but I can lift it to a generic iteration of V. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, th this is well founded, right? So, and this is, uh, I mean, what is this thing? This is just the H omega two, comma epsilon, comma the non-stationary ideal, comma. Well, let me write. Uh, I don't know, uh, pi, this, this is supposed to be pi, pi of A, uh, from the point of view of M, okay? Okay, let's see. So this, this inner model has an outer model, namely V call omega omega 2, which can see more or less this, right? I mean, the fact that N0 is in D star, well, D is the projection of some nice tree T. Uh, so N0 basically is in the projection of T. Uh, so N0 will also be in the, in the image of the projection. So let's identify P with this map P, right? So N0 is also in the projection of pi of T. Okay, so basically, now what I'm saying, so M has an outer model, namely this thing, which can see the whole picture, and what does the whole picture mean? It means exactly this. It means that there is a Pmax condition, um, which is in the new version, well, which is in, the, is in here. This is the Pmax condition, and there is an iteration going from here to here, uh, so that if you write that, well, then the A star is this thing, and, um, and, and that's what I want to say at this point. I, I want to say, you know, I, I want to say something slightly different. So, so this model can see um, that there is this kind of iteration where N0 is, is in here, and the, the two ideals of these two things match, which means that the two ideals of these two match, right? Okay, and now, okay. Now M has this outer model, but the fact that I was trying to describe is a, you know, it, but by Schoenfield, there is a forcing extension of M which can see such a situation. There is a forcing extension of M where you just collapse, I think it's omega three or something, you, you collapse row to become countable. In that forcing extension of M by Schoenfield, you can see um, that there is such a picture. You know, you can see that there is, is this guy which is in the projection of this tree together with an iteration, uh, together with, uh, the fact that the ideals of these two things match, okay? And now you can pull back that statement to B, okay? So what, what did we actually prove? We proved what I would call the starting point of the whole thing. So the starting point is in, I think I said we collapse row, I, I think I meant to say collapse row, row plus or something. I think when you look at it, you, you have that in V, call omega omega two, or if, if you just collapse something sufficiently big, um, we have the following. You know, you also see, in here you also see this iteration going from here to here, which is this thing, so you can make that part of the statement and, and pull it back, okay? So in here what you see is, you see all these things. So let me, let me write it down. Um, there are, generic iterations mi <coughs> pi ij ni sigma ij uh, such that um, you know uh, the initial segment of this thing up through the omega 1 of N0 is in N0 and witnesses that M0 is weaker than N0 in Pmax, right? That M 
omega 1 is actually h omega 2 of v epsilon um, the non-stationary ideal of v together with a. Uh, you know, the, the rest of the iteration is just a stretch of via the map sigma 0 omega 1. Uh, what else do I want to write? Um, I want to say that, uh, what else do I need? Oh, that n0 is in the projection of t. And that's it, that's, that's what we really need, okay? I mean, the point is, just to, just to repeat, um, you want to show that this is true. The way you show that this is true is you work here, you do this construction, and then in this model, this statement is true, but if you replace the parameters by, the, by their images on the pi. Then by absoluteness, uh, because you have it here, you have it in a forcing extension of omega where, uh, of, of, of m where you collapse everything to omega, to omega, everything relevant, and then you pull back the statement. Okay? Okay, good. So this is our starting point, this observation. And this, um, this argument will actually prove that the forcing which we are about to construct is non-empty. Oh, yes. 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 You can collapse everything. You can collapse. Ev you can collapse even the tree. Uh, I wasn't very specific about. Uh, okay, maybe you. I don't want to think about it now. You you just collapse it, something which is big enough. You can collapse the tree. You know, this, this whole situation you make countable. In also the fact that, also this fact. And then you, by absoluteness, you, you have it in the forcing extension, and then you have this. Okay. You, you can do it that. I mean, yes. 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 I understand, but I think you can simply collapse. I mean, you know, you work with the set size version of the tree and you just collapse. I, I think that that's okay. Okay, okay, uh, we can see. Um, good, okay, so, um, so this is a certain situation which you should keep in mind. I mean, this is kind of, um, what the fourth thing will do for, for you is adding, the, I mean, you know, you, you only want to add this, this, you're only interested in this iteration, but in order to make things going, you actually want to add more, namely also this kind of iteration, which has the property that the H omega two becomes the uh, generic iterator of a countable BMX structure. Okay, and that's important for the argument. Okay, so uh, what the forcing will do, it, it, will, um, it will add this kind of thing, but it will actually add more. Now, Okay, so how do, you, how do you add this thing by forcing? Um, now this is something I will leave to you as an exercise, namely you cook up a language, let me call it L bar. So this is just a first order language in which you can describe such a situation. So what do you mean by that? 
Um, I want to cook up a, a first-order language, first order language with, with, with constants and also you know, with constants for all these models which show up here. Uh, there is also a constant for the tree. There will be constants for, let's say, natural numbers and ordinals or these kinds of things. You know. um, and what you want is that if you have a, uh, a complete consistent theory, it, it gives you this kind of situation. Okay, so let me not go into that. That's an easy exercise. Okay, uh, so you cook up this language to to describe exactly this kind of situation. Okay, um, so so you do it in a way. Uh, you, you have this language. If you have a consistent, complete uh, theory in that language, it gives rise to this thing. And if you have this situation, you know, modulo some naming of of things. Uh, you will get a complete consistent theory. So when you have the theory, you get the models by just, they will be term models and then you do the usual thing. Okay, so, so this situation corresponds to a complete consistent um, theory in the language L bar. Okay, so the forcing conditions will be just um, finite pieces, finite um, subsets of L bar. But which ones? Okay, now another ingredient comes in. Oh. <laughs> So let kappa be big enough. I think this works. Okay. Now I want to use diamond kappa. I can pretend it's true in V because I can just force it and I don't, it doesn't affect any, you know, I, it's, I don't even add, I can do it in a way that I don't even add uh, bounded subsets of kappa. Okay, so let's pretend this is true. So what you will have is, um, <coughs> So I will, I will have that there is a, a continuous tower of structures, let me write Q lambda, lambda less than kappa, of substructures of H kappa of size, yeah, the predecessor to the, the LF2. Um, together with some kind of guessing function, what is it supposed to do? Together with some sequence A lambda, lambda less than kappa, such that they will all be subsets of Q kappa, such that for all P and B, let's say, subsets of H kappa, the set of lambdas so that Q lambda comma epsilon comma P intersect Q lambda comma A lambda is a substructure of H kappa epsilon P and B is always stationary. Okay, what's, what's the point of that? We want to define this forcing. I said that the forcing uh, every forcing condition will have finitely much information in this language about the situation you want to add. But we have to do more. We have to work with some kind of side conditions. But I don't distinguish between side conditions and the forcing itself. It makes it a bit more handy. Um, and in order to define the forcing, we, we go by recursion. So we have to define sort of um, preliminary versions of the final forcing along the way but in a very uh, stupid way. So, so just as you know, it, you define P lambdas by induction on lambda less than or equal to kappa and they will just increase. Okay, so nothing, nothing fancy. Um, but we, we will apply this in order to kind of, you know, the idea is this is kind of the last forcing and this is a typical, well, let's say a name for a, for a club or information about a club in the, in, the, in the language of the forcing which we don't even yet know. And then we kind of want to guess it along the way what, what happens. Okay, this is, this is somehow the idea. Okay, okay, we, we have this property. And now, okay. So you recursively define 
forcing p sub lambda, lambda less than or equal to kappa. And the final forcing, which, which does the job, will just be the last one of them. OK, so this is the, uh, this is the intended forcing you, you look for. And we will verify that it adds the situation and it preserves stationary sets and everything. OK, and uh, now I come to the unpleasant part. <laughs> OK, so let's, um, let's assume we want to define p lambda. OK, so what? Um, what it does is there are also, uh, you enrich the language, OK? So each of these forcings comes with, comes with their own language, L lambda, let's say, uh, an extension of uh, this one fixed language, L bar, which you're really interested in in order to describe the situation. Uh, uh, which has also formulae of the form. Uh, okay, the way I do it is um, delta goes to lambda bar. You'll hopefully see in a second what that means. So the delta here is less than omega 1. The lambda bar here is something less than lambda. This is the the lambda from, we are defining this forcing, um, describing or giving information on a partial function from omega 1 to lambda. And also, you have statements which start describing a substructure of, of, of um, such a structure. OK? So for instance, x is an element. So there is a name for a substructure. So for each delta you associate to each, you know, if, if this formula is, is in, then if, if this formula is in your condition, um, then it says that delta gets mapped to lambda bar. And then you say that uh, you want to describe at stage delta a substructure of uh, q lambda together with something. I, I will write it down. Um, so you, you have a name for that substructure of Q lambda, and you have names for elements of Q lambda, okay, describing uh, or giving finite information about uh, a substructure X of um, Q lambda bar. This is the same. The Q's are these models from over there. So this is this lambda bar, right? The delta is this delta. Delta gets mapped to lambda bar. So you're talking about Q lambda bar. Uh, epsilon P lambda bar. We are going by recursion, so we already know what the forcing is. OK. And then there is the A lambda bar, which comes from the diamond sequence. OK. OK. OK, it will be the case. Um, OK, you do that, OK? Um, now there is, again, a, the same kind of correspondence between semantical objects and a, a complete uh, consistent theory, so a syntactical way. You know, what I want to have is that a complete and consistent uh, L lambda theory describes me not only this situation, but also a partial function from omega 1 to lambda, with, with the property that, you know, if I take all the x's so that x element x delta dot is, is, in, is, in, the, is in, then uh, this, this gives me a substructure of, of this. This is a lambda bar. Right. OK. OK, so I can tell you now what the forcing is. Um, I don't know, maybe I should erase this. So unfortunately, now you have to keep something in mind, I think. Uh, so we have this diamond kind of thing with this property. So here is the definition. So P is in P lambda if and only if 
Uh, okay, so there is a, if in V call omega theta theta big, big enough, there is a consistent and complete set sigma of L lambda formulae uh, such that, first of all, P is just a finite subset of sigma. So what this means is that a forcing condition gives you just finitely much information about something. Uh, so you promise when you say P, I promise to be able to extend it to a complete and consistent theory, but I want much more. Uh, I want to say, and if sigma, you know, there is this correspondence between a complete and consistent theory and the objects you're really interested in, if sigma gives rise to, well, it always gives rise to a situation like over there, so uh, to generic iterations, m i sigma i so pi i j. You know, this is here, it's important why I said that in the very beginning. When I write omega one and see omega one of v, don't think about the preservation of anything. This is really, uh, uh, theory, or how do the philosophers call it? Uh, okay. Uh, the sigma, you know, it's always supposed to be the case that such a sigma uh, um, gives rise to such an iteration. You, you always want that you have these, these properties. I'm not writing it down. Okay. Uh, and, um, and also we get from this kind of stuff, we get a function. Let me write k for the domain of, of the function you get here. k from, um, sorry, the function is a and the domain is k to lambda, k being a subset of omega one. And, uh, and you, you get these, uh, these substructures x, um, uh, a, uh, why do I write, whatever. Okay, then more holds true. Uh, okay, let me, let me write it here because this is now the key thing. Okay, what you want is, uh, first, you want that this x delta is a, a, an elementary substructure of q a of delta, right? You associate to a delta something bigger. So this comes from this tower in the context of diamond, epsilon p sub a of delta, which is the fourth thing we already know. And then here you have the thing from the diamond sequence. Okay, you want to have that as a substructure. And x delta, that's the point of, of this delta, x delta intersect omega one is supposed to be exactly delta. You don't care, think of them as countable substructures, but I, I don't care as long as x delta intersect omega one is delta, okay? And the last property is, thirdly, and this is the new thing, that when you look at Sigma, I don't think so actually. I think it's, it's, it's pretty stationary, but it won't be a club as far as I can tell. It won't be a club. It will be pretty big, but um, okay, if I, every element here is a forcing condition, okay? Just by the way, how things are set up. So these are these are forcing conditions. So if I intersect with x delta, then this thing meets every dense set for all e subset of p sub a of delta dense 
E being definable over this structure, Q A of delta, epsilon, P A of delta, comma, A A of delta, being definable over this structure, but from parameters in the substructure. Um, from parameters in X delta. You could also write delta here, it wouldn't matter. Okay, so X delta is this substructure with this property and you want to maintain this thing. So, so what this means is somehow that um, I tend to think of this whole thing, you know, whenever possible, not syntactically, but semantically. So a complete and consistent set, this gives you, you know, this gives rise to, to these kinds of objects, okay? Okay, but here you have to think syntactically, kind of. Uh, it gives rise to these objects. <clears throat> In particular, we, you have, will have these substructures, and somewhere you, you see this whole thing. You, know, you, you see it here, you don't see it in V. It's impossible to see such a thing in V. Okay, so you see it here, and uh, where you see it, in the model you see it, um, you already produced, to some extent, generics for the, for the substructures, right? Okay, this. Um, these guys, they are not in V. This would be way too much to ask for. Uh, there would be a hope that they are in V if, if you're trying to go for some proper forcing, but we are, of course, not. It's impossible to force what we want to force by a proper forcing. Um, so they, they won't be in V. Okay. Uh, so two remarks. The empty set is always a condition in the forcing. This is the argument from over there. You can run this kind of argument. Um, nothing forces you to, to not let k being the empty set, and then you basically don't have to do anything as far as this part and this part goes. And then this argument from over there exactly shows that this is a condition. Right? So this is the empty set of formulae. Okay, and you can extend it just, um, you, will, you will get these objects in here and then that's it and this, this does it for you. And the other observation is um, that, uh, secondly, that if you force, so if G is uh, in, in contained in P lambda and is, let me just write def, Q lambda, I'm thinking of Q lambda now as, as this, so, such a structure. Um, well, think of, okay, so, so this is a substructure of H kappa, right? And if, if, you, if, you're, if, you, if you take something which is generic, you meet everything which is definable over that structure, uh, then, Okay, so the elements of G are finite sets, so the union of G, this is a set of formulae. It will be a consistent and complete set of formulae, and it has exactly the properties as sigma has. This takes a, li this takes a little bit of an argument, and, uh, but it is true. Okay, so if, if you look at that, uh, then it has exactly these, these uh, three properties which I wrote down here. This is by density, okay. When this has uh, properties, okay, maybe that should be an A, that should be an B. Properties one, two, three, if I call it sigma above. That's, that's, a, that's a key thing, it's easy, but it's a, it's a little argument, right? Because you, um, you know, when you have a forcing condition in here, so each forcing condition comes with, with its own sigma, but then it's a density argument. You, you can always put, you know, add, this is, this is basically about finitely much information, and you can always put the relevant stuff in so that in the end this will be true when you actually, when you actually force, okay? Okay, I have 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, go. I'm sorry? Where do I use? It will come. <laughs> uh, well, I already, I mean, in some sense, I already did it because the definition of the first thing uses the diamond sequence. Okay, but the proof will also use it, don't worry. Yeah. Okay. So the key claim is the following. Uh, let's force, let me start writing it here. Uh, let G, remember P is just the last one. P is P sub kappa, so the last forcing in our uh, series. Uh, okay. Over V. Um, okay, so, so, so in particular, this, this, um, this G gives rise to a sigma, and we have all these nice properties. Um, so, so in particular, G gives rise to, to such objects, okay? Gives rise to iterations mi pi ij i less than or equal to j less than or equal to omega 1 and n i sigma ij with the relevant properties. Um, so an initial segment of that witnesses that m0 is weaker than n. n0, n0 is in our dense set. Uh, m omega 1 is the h omega 2 of, uh, of V. And um, okay, because, because this is uh, weaker than that as being witnessed by an initial segment, it also means that if you look at, you know, the last designated ideal of, from these models is just the non-stationary ideal of V. So the last designated ideal of this model, which is, which let me denote by I N omega one, right? This is the last model from the N iteration. It has a designated ideal. And what I want to say is that uh, if you intersect it with N omega one, then this is just the non-stationary ideal uh, of, um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, one thing is trivial, the other thing is what we want to prove, right? If, if I do, if I write, if I write M omega one here, then this is trivially the non-stationary ideal of, of m omega one, which is, this is the same as h omega two of v. So this is the non-stationary ideal of v. This, this just comes from the fact that m zero is weaker than n zero as being witnessed by an initial part of this iteration. So this is trivial. But what I want to do, okay, what I want to have is the key lemma that's the thing that interests me. Oh, and by the way, I built in, I didn't really talk about it, right? I mean, I make sure that the, that the, that the capital A is the right thing everywhere. Uh, but the, the key lemma, what you have to prove, the, the non-trivial thing is that if you, if you look at this ideal, so this is outside of V. Uh, if you restrict it to, sorry, then this is just the non-stationary ideal of the forcing extension intersect n omega one, right? This, so this is, uh, so if you can prove this, you also prove that the forcing preserves stationary sets by the, by that line, okay? Is, is it clear what I mean by the key lemma? So you want to show that the last, desi that, the, that the ideal of the last model from this iteration is simply the non-stationary ideal of the forcing extension restricted to the model. Okay. Okay, that's what we have to do. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, I will try to say something. Um, proof. Okay. So what you do is um, you pick a p from the generic, uh, which forces you know you are worried about some club, and then. Also, there is this stationary set 
uh, well, I mean, one direction here is trivial, that the ones which are in the ideal are no longer stationary in the forcing extension that's actually witnessed by the iteration itself. So what we have to prove is that if something is positive, um, you know, this is an element of I, I mean, there will be a name for, for this kind of thing, let's say I dot n omega 1, but it's, it's positive there. Uh, so let's give it a name. But it will be represented somehow. You know, we build up these things, we build up these models from as, as term models. So there will be terms. So think of the terms as natural numbers or something. So you look at equivalence classes of natural numbers, at least for the for the countable uh, iterates, right? And the last one is just the direct limit. So everything in here is represented as something. It comes from somewhere. So it's represented as let's say sigma i omega one dot of, okay, and then there is a constant or a natural number, I don't know, n inside i. So this is a typical constant from your language which represents an element of the term model for this thing, okay. Uh, okay, and, and you, you know, you, you may, may have that this actually contains, for instance, just to give you an example, you know, this, this will, for instance, contain a statement which says c n i uh, is, you know, positive in, in the ideal i, n i, something like this, right? It, it's, it's in here, the statement. Okay. Uh, okay, what we want to show is that there is a q stronger than p, uh, and there is a delta, so that q forces c dot intersect s dot uh, contains uh, Delta, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, how are we going to get it? Um, okay. So you say d sub psi is the set of all q stronger than p, so that there is an eta bigger than or equal to psi, so that q forces um, eta is in, right? I mean, this is always dense. Uh, Okay, for psi less than omega one, and also you have information about <coughs> q comma eta q forces eta. Okay, the, the, what I'm doing at this point is I say the following. You know, I said before that this diamond sequence will um, guess kind of names for clubs. What it really guesses is now this kind of thing. So look at the sequence d psi psi less than omega one, concatenated in one way or the other by E. You know, th these are all um, subsets of the forcing. The forcing is a subset of H kappa, if you think about it. Okay, so this is, this is a subset of, of H kappa. Okay, so uh, this, this will be guessed somewhere by the diamond sequence in the, in the sense I, I wrote it down here. Uh, so what we want to do is, so you pick a sufficiently big lambda, uh, I mean below kappa, such that uh, you know, q lambda epsilon p lambda, I mean typically this is equal to p intersect q lambda, I mean, plum, uh, comma a lambda is a elementary substructure of h kappa epsilon p, the whole forcing, which is p kappa, comma, and now you have this thing, d vector concatenated with e, right? Hmm? So the lambda here is less than or equal to kappa. Uh, when we define it, this goes to lambda, so all these guys will be less than lambda. Uh, but in particular, of course, it also defines p kappa, and we said p is p kappa. And if you look at it, what happens, um, it's always, the forcing p lambda is always a subset of q lambda, and they increase just uh, as subsets, okay. Uh, OK. 
Okay. Uh, okay, you, you pick that. And now what you'd want to do is you work in a forcing extension. Um, <laughs> Okay, I think Menachem won the bet. I, I'm not gonna, uh, but I will try to give you an idea what's going on. Hmm? <laughs> well, I'm pretty good. I'm on page eight. I have eleven. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, right. So what we are going to do now is we have this um, Q lambda. So what we want to do is we pick a. We have this fixed condition, right? So we pick a, and I said big enough, so P will also be a condition in P lambda. Now let's take a generic over this structure for the forcing P lambda, okay? Let G prime be sufficiently generic over this structure, okay? For the forcing, uh, uh, what is it, P sub lambda. Okay, so this gives rise to, okay, you look at this uh, consistent and complete theory. G con yes, thanks, yes, of course. Uh, yes, this one fixed thing here. Uh, you can do that because P is in P sub lambda for all big enough lambda. And so this gives rise to these kinds of objects, uh, m, uh, m i, pi i j, n i, sigma i j, i less than equal to j less than equal to omega one, and also you have these, this um, function, let's say, a partial function from omega one to lambda, and you have this collection of substructures x delta delta in k. So that will be a substructure of Q sub A of delta together with the stuff which belongs here. Okay. Now the point is, um, okay, where is it? This term, because you force below that condition, will be interpreted by a positive set in, in the last model from this iteration. Okay, so sigma dot i omega one c dot n i will be interpreted by some element of um, you know the designated ideal uh, from the last model of that iteration n omega one plus. Uh, okay, where do I actually pick the generic? Uh, you know, let's say we work in V call omega, I don't know, I think you just have to collapse lambda, I think that's enough or something. Okay, so everything there is countable, you can pick this generic, uh, you have this situation, but that, what does that mean? That simply means that you can now continue the iteration, you can continue that, that iteration as much as we did before, it's, it's similar to the argument we did in the very beginning. We continue this iteration, so the next generic alpha power will be one where we simply throw in uh, this set T into the generic filter. Okay, so continue, continue n i sigma i j. Remember, when I write omega one, I'm not claiming anything at this point that this is collapsed or not. Uh, is, okay, we just go to the, the omega one of, of this structure, uh, n i sigma i j, i less than equal to j less than, so let's say rho is the omega one of this thing, it's lambda plus or something, which I think should be kappa. Uh, okay, in a way, such that, um, uh, that um, t, uh, how can I write it? Um, that omega one, I mean the ordinal omega one, is an element of sigma omega one, omega one plus one. The ordinal omega one is an element of sigma omega one, omega one plus one of t. No problem, right? Uh, okay, I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, okay, let, let me just draw a picture and then I finish, okay? Um, Right, so so it's a bit similar to what we did before. So we have these, um, we have this original iteration. So we have m zero goes to m omega one of n zero. That all exists in n zero. There is this iteration n omega one, m omega one. We don't know if omega one got collapsed or not. But anyway, we now continue this iteration to produce some n uh, row we map this iteration under this map, so this will get an, an extension of this kind of thing that will be in here. Um, what else? Uh, okay, so the, the key point now is that you can, um, you know, you have this, where is it? Uh, where did I write down, oh, I erase it or what? Uh, just one second. Oh, here. This is a, a complete and consistent theory. You can lift that up point-wise. What do I mean by that? I mean, this is always the h omega 2 of v. This is part of the whole thing. Okay, so this is an initial segment, if you want, of v. So I can lift this iteration to an iteration to here, like in the first picture we had over there. Okay? Um, so what, what I can do if I call this map pi, I have this, um, you know, there, there, is this, there is this Q sub lambda sitting inside here and I picked this G prime as being sufficiently generic over this structure for the forcing P sub lambda, right? So what I can do, uh, right, so there was this uh, G prime Okay, and, and this gives rise to the union of G prime, I call it. I can just lift this up point-wise. I can look at, um, uh, this is not the right thing. Uh, the point is that this is a complete and consistent theory for whatever happens, happens here. So what I want to say, let me try to say it in, in two sentences. Okay, what I want to say is that I have this condition I have this condition P, which lives here. I have pi of P. Pi of P is a condition here, okay? P is kind of certified by, by sigma, okay? P extends to, to sigma, okay? If I look at that, that's also a theory, but not a complete one from the point of view of that. But, but this is kind of part of the theory, of course. But if, if you look at things, I mean, this is just a continuation of the iteration I have so far. So I can extend that to a complete and consistent theory uh, working, uh, working in, in the world where I did all that stuff. What do I have to do? Well, as far as the, the models and iterations go, this is just an end extension, so it's kind of trivial. But then there are also these substructures and which, which are given to me by this, by this sigma, and I can just lift them up point-wise, and I will not lose this property. Okay, so, so that's okay. And in fact, I can do even more. I can extend that to a complete and consistent theory, call it sigma tilde, uh, verifying that this is a condition in the forcing of the model M, but I can add one more point, kind of, uh, when I want to give information about such things. I can say uh, that the omega one of V gets mapped to pi of lambda. I can make that part of the theory. Union, the formula omega one gets mapped to pi of, of lambda. And I can also add that kind of information. I can say that omega one is an element of, and then there is a dot, omega one, omega one plus one of, and then I have, uh, you know, this is, this is given by this representation, okay? I can make that part of, um, uh, this, is, this, is, this is written in here, but I can also, yeah, that, okay. Uh, in any event, I mean, I, I can add that, uh, and, and it stays a, uh, and, and I can, and I can describe, <laughs> sorry, uh, and I can add all the, 
uh, x element x dot omega 1 for x is in the range of pi, intersect pi of q lambda. Okay, that, that will be a, uh, so this is, um, this is complete and consistent, but I can add that stuff and it stays uh, complete and consistent because I picked uh, G prime as a, as a generic. Okay, so I have a, so this is, uh, this means that I can actually extend this condition by adding that kind of thing and some other stuff. And, and it's, it's guaranteed. No, this is the completion. This is not, I'm not saying this is a condition here. This is the completion. This will be the condition. Pi of P union, and I, I write this. Maybe I write two or three other things. And this is then the completion, I claim, which verifies that this is a condition in here. Okay, there is an omega one here. I pull everything back. So that means I have, a, a condition, I have an extension down here, which end extends P, and it, it comes from P by adding delta goes to lambda for some delta and everything is okay, and I think I cannot do the rest of the argument. <laughs>